And of those, 24,734, or 82%, were reached and asked to self-isolate. Well, more now on the growing pressure on the Housing Secretary, Robert Jenrick, to quit over his decision to approve a controversial housing project in the East End of London. Joining me now is the Shadow Housing and Plan Planning Minister, Mike Amesbury. Uh, thank you for being with us, Mr Amesbury. Uh, the Prime Minister says, uh, we know what happened and the matter is closed. What do you say? Well, there are certainly more unanswered questions here. Um, uh, we've been pushing to ensure there's a full document, a uh, full publication of the emails, uh, documents and text associated with this. And now you can see why there was so much resistance uh, after the debate yesterday. We've had a full publication and, and, and it's clear actually that this is another case of the, the rule don't apply to a minority at the top of government, from Dominic Cummins and now to the Secretary of State, Robert Jenrick. Um, um, there was um, a, a £1 billion controversial property development. By sheer coincidence, Richard Desmond attends a Conservative Party fundraiser. By sheer coincidence, shows him a three or four minute video uh, with key executives on the table. By sheer coincidence, now it's revealed, then there is um, a series of texts from Robert Jenrick the next day about the said property development. Look, this is about parliamentary standards. Clearly, there are issues in terms of the um, ministerial code there. And this is up to the prime minister to police that, to maintain that. Uh, but if it's all sheer coincidence, uh, then he's done nothing wrong. Well, this was then taken to a judicial review when a unlawful planning direction was made, which happened to save uh, Richard Desmond's development company up to £50 million in a community infrastructure levy, which would have provided vital infrastructure in terms of local community, whether that's schools, whether that's GP surgeries, and very importantly, affordable housing. There's just a day before that was due to come in, hey presto, the Secretary of State intervenes and now it's clear with the publication of texts and emails that actually that was deliberate. That was deliberate. So how can you take this further uh, if the Prime Minister who you've appealed to says it's a closed matter? Well, we will use every parliamentary mechanism um, available to us. But you are right, ultimately, look, this is about, this is about honour. And, and, and maintaining high standards in, in public office. And just as it was with Dom Dominic Cummins, just as it is with the Secretary of State, the Prime Minister Johnson, it's his responsibility to make sure that, the, 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 that we have trust, um, um, that there's a, the government has moral authority, which is, is, is rapidly, rapidly slipping away. Uh, um, if we look at their response to the coronavirus crisis, well, there, there's an example. We do have a housing shortage uh, in the view of many in this country. And isn't it the case uh, that councillors and authorities all across England, including uh, Labour councils, strike deals with developers in order to get housing? Yes, but, but, but this actually um, um, went against the grain. This meant less affordable housing. Um, Tower Hamlets um, wanted at least 35% to be affordable housing. This actually took it down to 21%. And then, of course, the saving in terms of the £50 million community infrastructure levy meant that, look, lots of our key workers that we clap every, that we've clapped every Thursday um, won't have the vital affordable, affordable housing that they need. And remember, Tower Hamlets, of course, is one of the poorest authorities uh, in the country with very high levels of, of, of child poverty. This went completely against the grain and the serious questions remain unanswered. I, I wonder, uh, finally, Mr Ainsbury, what do you think Mr Jenrick's motivation uh, was for behaving in this way? Well, I mean, at the moment, we can speculate. We can speculate more based on the publication of the of the text 
publication of the emails. Um, um, Richard Desmond himself said in one of the, the texts, come on, we need a decision on this now. So, you know, we, we, don't, we, we don't want the Marxists in Tower Hamlet's town hall to get their hands on this dough. You know, I think he's talked about up to 45 million. I mean, it's, it's inappropriate, unprofessional language. But, of course, when you're a Secretary of State, you need to step away, step away from semi-judicial um, 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 uh, matters, planning matters such as this. And to be clear, are you saying, knowing what you know now, that Mr Jenrick should uh, leave his post as, uh, how, as a Cabinet Minister? That's a matter for the Prime Minister, um, um, again, as it was a matter in terms of Dominic Cummings. If you were Prime Minister, would you sack him? <laughs> I'm, 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 not, I'm not Prime Minister, def 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 definitely not, and neither would I want, want to be. Look, um, he's got to come back to Parliament and, and, and answer quite a number of contradictions and unanswered questions. This is going to rumble on and on. Okay, Mr. Ainsbury, thank you very much for joining us. This is Sky News coming up.